What's bonkin' everybody, and welcome to Take Your Time, a Persona 5 Royal podcast where we play Persona 5 Royal in real time along with its real life calendar dates. My name is Tom Marks, and I'm joined as always by Jonathan Dornbush. Jonathan, how are you? Tom, I have uh, perhaps troubling news for you. Uh oh. I just started drinking my coffee before the show, so there is very possibly going to be a dramatic increase in my energy levels as the show goes on. I love Whereas, it. Whereas, like, if you notice me bouncing off the walls by the end of this, even though that's when, like, arguably some of the lesser exciting things happen, it might still be, it, like, that's the explanation for it. Is. This, can, this can be, like, the opposite of Weeks Where You Host, where you start at, like, a thousand, and then it just sort of dwindles, right? And now this will be, like, out. yeah. It's, yeah. It'll be good. I'm excited. Yeah, it's it's the inverse Jonathan property, as we all know of these yeah. podcasts. Yeah. Well, I'm excited because it's an exciting week, too. We are going through the dates of September 6th through September 12th, which more accurately can be known as the Hawaii trip. Hooray. Uh, vacation we uh, had talked about yeah. once upon a time. <laughs> there was there was hopes of... of early in the in the the younger days our, our more naive days of doing this um on the beach in waikiki and just yeah. filming from there but you know life happens um yeah it, this is a an iconic another iconic moment in the game another kind of like uh staple scene obviously that that has all these fun little moments but it's also like i mean we say this a lot and then it's not true but it's also like a kind of on rails kind of quick week um you know, September yeah. 7th literally just, like, goes away because they're like, you're on a plane. Never mind, it's over. <laughs> so, yeah, like, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. But, uh, I, you know, knowing us, we, we have many a time on this show said, oh, it'll probably be a quick week. We'll have time to be able to jump into <laughs> other stuff. And then <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes later, well, we're out of time. Apologies to Kasumi. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's get into it then. Let's start with some housekeeping of last week. Uh, I've got a pop quiz answer for people uh, two people got it right in the in the YouTube comments at Dornology at the Dornology YouTube channel. Um, the Maria Z and Shaggy one five eight. Uh, Shaggy also has a comment I'll read, but both got it correct. The question was, uh, what is the full name of popular video game Gun About? Jonathan, did you have an answer for this? Um, I did, but then I also read some of the answers, so okay. I don't want to pretend like I knew what it was. Okay. So why don't you uh, let the audience at home who correctly guessed it uh, get the kudos for this? The full name, <laughs> and you can learn this, you initially learn this by listening to some Sh- Sh- uh, Shujin kids just talking about it on the way to school, but as Maria Z pointed out, you also can hear it when you meet the confidant character that is all about, Gun About Later. Um, it's called Gun About, colon, The Super Real. <laughs> Which is, I love it. Just such a weird name. It's great. The, it feels like uh, uh, the early days of like VR game naming conventions, <laughs> yeah. where you need to make something really catchy, and it's like, yeah, welcome to the super real. Like someone making a Matrix parody would call it the super real. And I, I guess, I guess the reason it's called that is because like the whole deal with the game is that it's like supposed to be so realistic like oh that's the one with the the realistic plastic gun where you're actually shooting right, and so that's. I guess the implication of it, but I like the idea more that it's like just super funky and it's like, Oh, that's super real. Super real. Yeah. Yeah. That would be, it's just like incredibly artistically amazing, like an off the wall and (laughs) has like MC Escher style art design to it for some reason, which would be very strange. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I was thinking, I, I didn't see the name in the game or like, I didn't remember it. And then I saw the comments and that immediately like took out any guess. I was like, I, we ended last week's show and I'm like, I'm going to have a really funny answer this week. <laughs> and then, then I saw the comments and was like, I'm, I can't think of anything but the real name. Yeah. Well, we, uh, like I said, Shaggy158, who was one of the people who commented also had a comment alongside the answer that said love the podcast guys find you randomly on spotify and immediately gave me a craving to play p5r again decided to hop into new game plus on merciless and catch up to you guys that's bold i'm you go you go for that's it. a difficulty yeah <laughs> yeah oh my god um last time it only took listening to the soundtrack to encourage me to run a new game plus on p5 quick question was persona 5 your first persona game if so did you go back to any of the previous titles after and then ends with hashtag oya is bay which i appreciate deeply. we're gonna have just um, the oya stands real real <laughs> madness i mean we kicked that beehive we deserve the we stings did. Okay? it's how we get the clicks everyone that's the secret <laughs> No. The Oya oh, Rage Clicks. The Oya oh, Rage Clicks. That's where the real internet money is. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit, I think, but uh, yeah. this was my first Persona game, um, and I 
meant to go back to Persona 4, and I really wanted to play Persona 4 Golden right after I played P5 the first time, but also I had just finished like a 120-hour JRPG, and I wanted a little break, and then other stuff happened, and I just kind of never went back for it. So this is my first and beyond Strikers only yep. Persona game. Yeah, I got Persona 4 Golden on the Vita when it came out because I was a, just when I was a fan it, back in the day before we worked at IGN, I was listening to Podcast Beyond and, and Greg Miller would talk about it all the time. So I was like, I'm going to get Persona 4 Golden since he loves it so much and we usually have similar taste. And I played about two or three hours and I was in college at the time or like right out of college. And I had never played a game that was like close to a visual novel. And so my brain was like, I'm in the middle of like my my vibrancy of my youth in college. And I'm just playing a game where there's a lot of talking. And I'm like (laughs) hanging out in my apartment with my roommates who I'm really good friends with. And I'm just kind of sitting in the corner watching these kids talk about like their high school days. And I kind of was like, this isn't the game for me right now. And I put it away and never touched it again. And then obviously fell in love with Persona 5 and just, I just don't think it was the right time in my life or like I wasn't in the right mind state for knowing what the game would be. I get um, that. And so I never went back to it, but I like, yeah, Golden is the one that I would like to go back to. I know there is a lot of thought about the, the earlier Personas. I know P3 kind of started the more modern versions. Right. Um, but yeah, I've, I've never gone back to them. We'll see what happens if they do anything like with, for the 25th anniversary. Um, right. They're doing Anything, like eight things or whatever. Yeah, they're doing some ridiculous, and and obviously we'll talk about whatever those announcements are on the show. But like, I if they relate to the older games, like I do want to check them out, even if they're very different, because I do know there's having talked to the patron saint of the show, Andrew Goldfarb, I do know that there are like very overarching bits of the games uh, that tie right. them together, but uh, they're extremely far away. And it's same thing with Shin Megami Tensei, with Shin Megami Tensei, excuse me. Uh, which there's a new entry coming out, which I'm sort of like debating whether or not to jump into. Sure. Um, but yeah. Anyway, that was random. Yeah. But uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely understand because I've had that too. I've had that with games, but I've also had that with uh, like movies and stuff. Right. Of you're just like, you go into it and hearing good things, but not quite understanding like what it's going to be like. And then you're like, Oh, I'm just not in the right mindset for what this is currently. And it's not like, a condemnation of what that thing is. It's just like about where you are and what you're thinking of. Exactly. Like I'm in into my second playthrough of P5. Obviously I love these types of games now. It just right. was like a thing I, I just didn't connect with at the moment, but totally. uh, yeah. One yeah. Day. I want to go back for P4 golden at some point too. Yeah. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, to doing that at some point. Cause I know I will. I just like not in the middle actually do it of a Royal pre playthrough right yeah, not in the middle of a royal playthrough while i'm also finishing up yakuza like a dragon and also really want to play tales of arise which just came out right now as we're recording this and so yeah yeah it's it's like there's this glut of jrpgs right now that i'm already interested in yeah and I, i'm in the tricky. early playthroughs of scarlet nexus and the world ends with you from earlier this year and it's like oh my right. god i went from having no jrpgs to like six on my docket right now it's been a good year for them I feel it has like. yeah it's that a, and a prolific year that and action platformers like it's it's been a really great time for games from the early 2000s indeed um, uh, but let's jump into unless you uh, no, no, you. I, I have a couple of emails, but we could maybe oh. do them at the end of the show if you want to. No, I, no, I forgot to ahead. mention beforehand. I that Kick, was my let's, fault. Let's, I ruined let's hear it from the readers. Let's just the restart listeners. the show. Hey, everyone, what's going on? <laughs> this, this fell apart really quickly. We were, we were like doing all right, and we then were it just on went roll. completely off the rails. Then I had to talk about my college days. Um, <laughs> anyway, and it wasn't even that interesting a story of my college days. Um, anyway. Uh, just really quick, uh, one email I want to read and then another, uh, I do want to read, but I need to do like a cut down look at it. Uh, so I just want to give a <laughs> shout out to that. Uh, but anyway, uh, Dan wrote in earlier this week and said, hi guys, I'm really enjoying the podcast so far. I'm currently at the beginning of August. So slowly catching up while I'm supposed to be working from home. We'll see you in a few weeks then, I suppose. Uh, not sure if it's been mentioned before or will be in the coming episodes, but something I don't think I've heard you talk about, uh, in LeBlanc is the crossword puzzle on the table closest to the stairs i think it appears once or twice a week and completing the clues gives you bonus intelligence points hope that's something new and useful take care dan and i think dan will either just be getting up to 
or will like is somewhere in the the ballpark of a podcast where we talk about you having trouble with a week that I had a very easy time with for yeah. a password puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just wanted to mention that because it'll be a funny point when he catches up to here. Um, I, yeah, we talked about it already, but like I like the crossword puzzles, but I also think of them in the same way as I think of like smoothies and like one of those things where it's just like, oh yeah, I'm just going to do that when it's there and not worry about it. Like I don't talk about every time we feed the plant either anyway. Exactly. Anymore yeah. either, right? I, I, yeah. I see it, I do it, and sometimes I write it down if it was one like I struggled with or, or something funny about right. it, but most of the time now I, I haven't uh, been writing it down. Also because we've now been doing more like New York Times crossword puzzles uh, since we have like that app and I the lines have been blurred uh, of sure which crossword puzzles are which um, the only other, the other email that I want to read very quickly was from Steve Steve wrote in uh, as you all can to do analogy at gmail.com uh, and was pointing us to another comment um, and said, loving the podcast and following your journey through one of my favorite games of all time, I want to contribute by sharing an analysis of the new song that gets performed at the jazz club that Akechi takes Joker to. Uh, this is just a share of someone else's work with uh, who commented in a YouTube video and they provided a link. Uh, and I'm by no means taking credit because I'm not this smart. Uh, <laughs> but it's one of the most thorough, thoughtful comments ever, so I want to share with others who love this game. Uh, below is the post by Crimson Cat in the YouTube comment section. Uh, with some helpful formatting and typo correcting. So I haven't gone through that full comment because it is quite long, but it is literally like a deep lyrical analysis of how that song reflects a catchy uh, and, and his journey in the game uh, and some other things, Cool, uh, which is really cool. I'll go through it and maybe uh, refer to it a little bit more in another week or two, but just wanted to mention it as something see foot. And when we talk about it a little more, I'll, I'll point to where that comment is, but yeah, it's just a really cool little like layered bit of how the game can have those meta commentary moments on itself. I love that. Yeah. That's really cool. But yeah, I mean, I know that you like the other songs, like, right. Like beneath the mask or whatever is like very, like has that connection all kind of more up front. but I didn't know about this connection and that's really, really neat. Yeah. So I'm excited to look into that. No, it's a, yeah, it, it's a really cool aspect of it. And, and maybe something we can talk further about when we go into the general music of the game a little bit more, but yeah, just thought yeah. that was a cool thing. So thank you both for writing in. And again, if you want to write in with an email, dornology at gmail.com is the place to do it. Indeed. But let's get into the week of September 6th and Hawaii. Uh, we have five days of basically Hawaii bookended by one kind of shorter free-ish day or <laughs> one free day at the beginning and then a, a jet lag day at the end. Yeah. Uh, so on September 6th, before we actually get off to Hawaii, uh, we meet Akechi at the train. He discusses uh, the mostly the rankings on the fan site and about how he's on them um, and says this kind of funny thing about how he's like, I was considering maybe it would be interesting to become a target of the Phantom Thieves because then uh, I could f learn more about their methods. But he's like, but then I don't know if that would actually be safe. That would be silly of me. <laughs> and, but it's like interesting to just see like, somebody on the rankings acknowledging that they're on the rankings because yeah. you know that person is very well and you, we yeah. know him to the extent of like he's he's clearly on to some things we've had those you know right. those discussions where he pretty pointedly says i think you're the phantom thieves uh <laughs> without saying it and so yeah it's it's a fun little conversation just to tie into that because the other than mishima the fans i can feel a little bit ancillary but it is like literally the po there's a poll from it on your loading screen between every day like it's um it is this ever-present interesting thing but yeah so to have someone in the world commenting on it who is on those rankings is a really funny funny moment yeah uh then we got a quiz in class from maruki just about i don't actually remember what that one was about but Murky gives you a quiz. Cr chronostasis? Or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the idea of, like, looking at, when you look at the second hand on your watch, why it looks like the second isn't moving for a little bit, and how your brain, like, makes up that moment. And it's just another one of those questions that ties into, you know, your perception of the world can actually influence it sort of things, or yeah. it can, like, seemingly influence what you think it is happening. Um, which is, I appreciate, like... How do I put this? Persona is not science fiction, right? <laughs> like, 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 they're, they're, this is not, they're not, it's not based in re, like real ideas. Sure. But at the same time, I, I like these little ways, especially through Maruki, that they talk about things like, 
you know, your world, act, like, the way you perceive things actually does influence kind of how the world looks to you in, in real ways that, you know, isn't going to make, you know, a palace appear that you can then enter or whatever. <laughs> but no, I'm, these things are not complete. They're, they're not based in nothing at all, which I appreciate. To, it, it's a, um, a fictionalized and exaggerated, like, take on, on things that make sense. I mean, like, we, the... Yeah. The phrase mind palace, obviously, you know, <laughs> with Sherlock, it, it's a very literal palace that he goes into. But, like, that idea is a thing that people do work with in, in their minds. And so this is a sort of natural extension if you were to make it this much, you know, more wild and, and exaggerated. This is kind of what it would be like. But, yeah, I mean, in terms of our perception of things, like, it, it's not far off from that idea. I frequently... Uh, have moments where I break my brain and I'm like, do people see the same colors I'm seeing? Right. <laughs> Just like right now is the color of the screen that you and I are looking at the same colors on the screen. And it like, I, if I think about that too long, I start to shrivel into a ball and, and man, we didn't even get past that. the quiz before it got like way, like just way into stuff. That's what happens before, before I've had my coffee. The filter of like my dream world, emotional state just, <laughs> you know, bleeds into the real world. Anyway, se- September 6th, it was a day. <laughs> the, the rest of this day, uh, you get a free afternoon. The free afternoon is kind of funny in this one. Cause Morgana at the beginning of it is like, Hey, have you done that mementos thing yet? And then there's nobody to hang out with whatsoever. So it really feels like this is gonna be your last time to do mementos for a while. You sure you don't want to just go right now? Yeah. <laughs> To which I said, no, thank you. I will play billiards. (laughs) Um, Yeah, this is... I had gone to Mementos, I think, at the very end of the week before. So I was kind of set. Right. Um, And so I actually did... Takemi was available for me to hang out with. Oh, okay. um, Because I think you're further ahead with her than me. Yeah, I need to do 10 with her. Yeah, this was my rank 8. So she happened to be available. But yeah, she was like the only one. So I, I just hung out with her. I was like, let me not waste this this day. Sure. Um, and yeah, that was, that was kind of all I did. Nice. Yeah. I played billiards. Uh, so I got the technical rank up from two to three. And then this is what I was remembering is you can get it to three to four. And when you do get to three, you get another book and um. then you have to read that book before you go back and get it to four. So it's like, you have to read the first book to get it to two. And then you have to buy the pool cue to get it to three. And then you have to read the second book to get it to four. And then that's good. And I think that's the way that it works okay. i might be i might be wrong about that because it might it kind of also left the door open for like maybe if you just have a lot of proficiency you can just get it to four so i might have uh, been i'm that that might be something i don't know about not all um, of us can be at max rank proficiency at this point so you know i get it i get it okay <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway uh-huh uh after that afternoon though uh you don't you can't do anything. Morgana actually, in one of the very few instances, says you've got to get. You don't have an early flight tomorrow. Your flight is in the evening. They make that very clear. But you got to get your rest, so yeah. you have to go to bed that night, and uh, you don't get to do anything um, during the evening. This is also a period where Morgana is just super duper sad. Just like Morgana is just so sad. Like every time you go to a thing to do a thing, Morgana's like, "Hey, could we?" Never mind. And like that'll happen for there's like a unique one of those dialogues for everything you go to in yeah. your Yeah. <laughs> Just really really bit of a bummer right now. Yeah. Um especially following up cuz we had talked about it honestly for the last couple weeks, but yeah, it's it's sort of hitting a, a point. Um I don't know if it was this one or, or when you get I think it's when you get back. There there's a Morgana moment that kind of like really crystallized that for me. Yeah. Um but yeah, we can talk about that then. Uh, and Morgana, of, I think even before you go to bed is like, hey, can we talk? No, it's okay. We can it's okay. You guys go to bed. And like, it's just like really sad. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's it a bit of heart. a bummer. Um, I was looking up while you were talking just out of curiosity, the flight from Hawaii to Japan and, and back and forth. Because, yeah, getting your rest if, you're, if your flight is in the evening seems really weird. But it's, it's about an eight hour flight. So it's not nothing. It's an eight-hour flight, but it's a... They talk about this in the game. It's an eight-hour flight across a time zone. Yeah. And it's across a time zone backwards. Yeah. So the way that it works is that they leave... I'm terrible with time zones, so I apologize. But they leave... If they left on Wednesday evening, they would technically get there 
Thursday morning, but because they would be crossing the Dateline backwards, it's like they get they get their. I don't know exactly. It's, it's really confusing. Well, so I'm trying <laughs> I'm to remember. So bad with dates because I flew to Japan once for a work trip. Um, yeah, and it was that really weird thing of. Uh, from flying from California to there, technically I had a stopover in South Korea, but uh, anyway, it was that that time difference was really weird. That one was really harrowing for me because I essentially had to just hit the ground running and start working because I got there at like 9 a.m. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, you essentially, oh my God, because like right now it is later in Japan, correct? Yes. This is like us trying to figure out how the podcast would be talking. <laughs> I know. Um, it's later in Japan. So when you flew back, you kind of flew into the future. Maybe it means that for this brief week, we were actually on the correct dates. It's possible. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Maybe. No, or it's the, I don't know. Or, or we were worse. even off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Let's just get out of this. Tell so us September in the comments. 7th, yeah. Yeah. September 7th. Um. I like literally like I, I took my last math class as a senior in high school and then I went to art school and I never looked back. So I do not. This is not quick maths is not my thing. It's fair. Anyway, um, the on September 7th, the Hawaii kind of like let's go to Hawaii sort of part of this is that you meet up at the airport with uh, basically everybody, including Mishima, who's oh, yeah, in your class. So he's on this trip, too. Um, and you just kind of chat and take a fun selfie which was actually my phone background for like a really long time oh um we talked we hadn't talked about this yet but persona 5 yeah. royal does this thing that i really love where it adds every time you kind of have like an event with the with the group it adds this new text where you get the photo right and it's yeah. like this photo i believe was in the original game but there's you, there's like four of them now on the hawaii trip rather than just just this one yeah um and there's so many they're like they're so cool and they're so well drawn and they're so full of life and i i love this sort of little bits of just like photos of the gang hanging out from a different perspective i I really like those yeah they like instantly make me think of like oh yeah they're friends like it's just something about the quality of them makes me instantly go oh yeah they are a group that that is really in this together and and really enjoys you know hanging out it is not just doing this because it's a job to save the world um it yeah i i really love those as well um the only other thing from this moment i wrote down was also that futaba can just look through your camera Mm -hmm. at any time which is real yep uh messed up and yeah uh, she's just very casually like oh yeah i put a spy app on your phone so i can look at your camera and listen to your mic anytime i want yeah it's not great uh, this is really not good. Uh, and then I don't remember what the context of it was. So if anyone in the comments wants to say, uh, but I just wrote down in my notes, Sojuro says, I owe you one, or I say <laughs> I owe you one to Sojuro. There's some something where Sojuro says that, and I think he says I owe you one. And then I wrote next to that, okay, dude. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> and it's kind of really bothering me. But, uh. The That's fact- a really great cryptic note. <laughs> anyway, if anyone remembers specifically what is owed by Sojuro, please let me know. Um, it's amazing. That'll be this week's quiz. <laughs> what is owed by Sojuro? Um... <laughs> That's Jonathan's quiz for the week. Yeah. Uh, the the only other thing I want to point out is because we do get that animated scene right after this. I don't want to like steal your thunder of introducing that, but we get the scene of them on the plane. No, yeah, um, yeah. So so basically, the, the, this day there's not much to this ho- this airport scene, and this yeah. day is basically just they meet up in the airport, and then it immediately the calendar is like, okay, it's September eighth now, and you get the cutscene. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, they're flying in. Ryuji has a Morgana mask. Like yeah, like a Morgana face mask. It is Morgana's eyes, right? It's a Morgana face mask. I'm like 99% sure, and I just really want to know what the origins of that mask are. <laughs> Did they make it? Like who in the group made it? Who in the group thought it was okay to do that? But has Morgana seen this? Uh anyway, it, that really threw me for a loop for a second. Um but also I would 100% buy that as a face mask. Um, I'm sure they make it somewhere. But yeah, that was my only note about that cutscene. Other than, again, I, I know there was a comment early in the show's run where someone didn't love him because of sort of the, the pacing choppiness that they sometimes create. But I, I love these more anime cutscenes. And so just seeing them all hanging out on the plane was a lot of fun. 
Yeah, uh, and especially this cutscene, the the story of this cutscene on September eighth of the way they land and then go through customs or whatever and then get to their hotel is uh, just Ryuji being an absolute adorable dork excited about every single thing. There's that moment where he's at the passport desk and the guy's like, how long are you going to be staying here for? And he's like, yeah, I have no idea. (laughs) He's like so excited, but it's like just such a dummy at the same time. He's the, uh, like, I, because I love this group so much, I I find it endearing, but a hundred percent, if I, if I was still living in New York, he's the type of tourist I would see. And I'd be like, God damn it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. He's Uh, that guy. But yeah, it's a very funny, basically establishes, this trip it like ryuji is just on cloud nine and does not really know what's happening (laughs) yep for this trip but uh yeah so uh you get to the hotel and you kind of are gathered you'll you'll recognize this hotel lobby a lot over this week uh you gather at the hotel and basically have to start off by uh picking roommates and room assignments which has not been planned apparently at all um which we actually get a bit of insight into um, I think tomorrow, it's tomorrow mm-hmm. that we get a little insight from Makoto into that. Um, and Kawakami is there. I was really confused and had to go back and watch the cutscene, but the original the original scene where she's talking to Makoto, she never says, I'm not going to be there. Yeah. She just says, a lot of the staff is going to be busy and we need third years to help out. So Kawakami never says she's not going to be there, which I misremembered. I had that same thought process. My first comment for today was, didn't Kawakami have to stay behind WTF uh, yeah. with a lot of question marks. But I I think y- you're 100% right because I went back and tried to remember it and it's like she doesn't ever say that. But this, it's kind of a heavy implication that she's not going to be there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she she's there. And uh, I wrote down the line that she says to them, don't do anything stupid. This isn't Japan. And I just love the idea that she's like, you can do stupid things when we're back home. I don't care about that. But just don't be stupid in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the room assignment stuff is funny, too, because on some people come over to on some girls from Shujin and are just like, hey, we want someone who can speak English. You want to hang out and also be our roommate? And on is just like, OK, and just like leaves them just yep. like absolutely ditches them immediately, which is great. I'm totally for it. Yep. Just uh, sure. <laughs> do her thing. And then uh, Mishima asks you to be your roommate because Ryuji can't because Ryuji's in a different class technically, right? So he's, you need to be, they need to be within their classes. And so that's kind of how the rooms break up within that kind of group. Um, And then you all go to Waikiki Beach to start. Yeah. And so you go hang out on the beach and it's a, it's kind of an uneventful first sort of thing. It's just them hanging out and it's, it's fun. It it's a running theme of the week, but very much like the rooms not being planned. That there's not a whole lot that is planned. Yes, for th- this is perhaps the loosest class trip I have ever heard of. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but and this it, is this is a I guess I'll just bring it up now. This is something that I think the next morning, um, ca- or uh, I believe it's Makoto brings up that Shujin was so, di- like, actively so disorganized with this entire thing because of all the scandal and all the stuff that they were going through that they basically just, like, that's why they th- just threw third years in as chaperones and also they, like, literally didn't make an itinerary for what they were doing. And so it's, it feels very wayward and Ryuji is even constantly like, well, we're not doing anything, right? Like, complaining about it. And it feels that way because it, actively is right like shujin like like it's not like we're complaining about this as like players it's like shujin actively screwed up this trip yeah (laughs) well like that's like that's noticeable even from a player perspective excuse me like that i do think there is something to this week that's really really fascinating as part of a like 100 plus hour jrpg because like it's a very memorable memorable week because it's so different from everything but like it is a boring week. Like, right there, there I, I'm having fun discussing it, and there's a lot of fun moments that we're going to talk about. But nothing really happens. No, it's a mess of a trip planned, which is true to the story. But it's not like they then thought of 
fun gameplay additions to add here, and I'm not knocking them for that. Oh, yeah, I see, I see what you mean. Yeah. But, like, th- there's You're nothing... Only given control of Joker a single time, and it's to talk to three people, and then it's over. <clears throat> yeah, it, which was really fascinating to me when we got to that point later in the week of just, like, oh, I guess you could have maybe done, like, a hangout a day would have made sense to me on some level. But, uh, again, like, it's, it's not a huge criticism. It's just that thing that, like... I think thematically it works. And I, I'm also one of those people, maybe because film school ruined my brain, but like, I'm okay when art is boring for the purpose of it, if it makes sense in the world. Like, it's okay when sometimes art isn't constantly making you happy to me. <laughs> and like, this is one of those weeks where I think it's a fun week and I think there's really fun moments, but it is fascinating to me that like, it is literally a week of the calendar where they're like, yeah, you don't really do anything, but we're yeah. going to make you go through that week. The first time I played through Persona 5, I was really hoping and thought that they were going to have a target in Hawaii and that they would go into Mementos in Hawaii or whatever it is, you know, into the metaverse in Hawaii. Um, And I was a little bummed that that didn't happen. But I think what Hawaii does as like a device for the overall plot is a couple things, which is not not that anything you said is wrong, because I think you're 100 percent right. Like it is kind of a. So a lot of the events are amusing and fun, but it is kind of a down week in terms of, like, stuff you're doing. And I think Hawaii kind of does two things that we'll talk about as we get through this week, yeah. which is um, it shows tang- like it shows in person that the Phantom Thieves are international, right? Because they yeah. are, have gone to another country to talk about, and people are talking about them still, which we'll get into more tomorrow. And then also, when they get back, and this is something we'll see... It shows how much kind of the fan of these have blown up in Japan Mm -hmm. in just the five days they were away. Totally. Um, Yeah. And so it it does feel almost like a loading screen, right? (laughs) Of like, here's just, they're going to go somewhere else because we need them to be somewhere else for a little bit. And here's a bunch of fun little silly things that are going to happen along the way. But yeah, you're not like, you're not doing much while you're there. And I like I do want to say I appreciate it for that because I, yeah, I agree yeah. with you. It serves those functions and it is kind of like I think it's something I've said before, but it's the type of thing you can do because this is a hundred hour RPG. If this were a 20 hour totally. game and this were an hour of it, I'd be like, what? Why? But it yeah. it works so much to pay off in those ways. And also, I think to do some stuff with Morgana, too, and, and the separation of it all. But yeah, it's totally yeah. it a hundred percent serves that purpose and you get the chance to do something like that when you're telling a story this way. And I, I think that's really cool, but it is, I had that same expectation the first time as you did. I was like, Oh, it feels like something more important should happen here at like in Hawaii. But anyway, yeah. yeah. And I also like them reemphasizing just that Shujin is a mess. Right? Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> that, that is a, an interesting part of it too, which we'll but, uh, get to. Yeah. <laughs> September, yeah. September 8th uh, ends after this Waikiki beach trip. <clears throat> In your hotel room with Mishima, who's basically just completely obsessed with the fan site and the rankings and is checking his phone constantly, even though he's in another country. Yeah. Um, and you kind of tease him for that. This is also a funny little moment with Mishima because uh, it's written in a way that has to work for no matter what level of Mishima's confidant line you've gone down. And so he plays a lot dumber in the Hawaii trip of like not knowing who the Phantom Thieves are. Mm-hmm. When yeah. at this point, you know, I've maxed him and he knows exactly who the Phantom Thieves are. And it's like, it's it's a little bit funny how that when you notice that moments have to work no matter where they are in someone's personal story. Yeah, I, I, that, that happens here. I, I wrote on the comic because I think it's very funny that in the dialogue choices, you can still do the play dumb with him of like, what are you talking about? I don't know what these you can, things you are. You can literally yeah. be like what's the fan site yeah i have not heard of that which i did do to him and he was like come on man you know and it was like yeah i know i just want to mess with you but yeah it's yeah. a it is funny when you when you can see the like the the matrix of it all yeah uh september 9th y'all meet up in the hotel this is kind of the thickest day of the week uh you meet up at the hotel and you're chatting and yusuke just walks up and <laughs> I love that they did this. Yusuke explains that there was they were flying to LA and then a terrible storm hit the was hitting the west coast and they couldn't land. So instead they just landed in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And and he's spending his time in Hawaii instead. It's it is such 
TV sitcom setup for how to get characters in a room together, and I love it. It's like, yeah. oh no, we couldn't land there, so we landed here. And yeah, yeah. it's... Uh, it's also it, very Yusuke to have him just, like, walk up behind you and start joining the conversation like it's no oh, big totally. deal. Yeah, he's he, he doesn't make a big deal out of it. He's just like, yeah, I'm here. Let's let's yeah. talk about things. But yeah, and, and then we get, as you said, more of a meteor day uh, of, yes. of things happening. The first of which is that you go to a Big Bang Burger, which is descri- a couple of things. This is setting up right for the next sort of arc, because we already know that the target of the next arc is Okumura uh, from Psy. And so the Big Bang Burger, they talk about how Big Bang Burger was is run by Okumura Foods. And then they go, oh, wait, Okumura, I've heard that name. And Okumura is actually the top of the fan site rankings right now for people voting who they want. And there are these rumors that when they moved international, uh, all of Okumura's foods competition like suddenly pulled out, right? And there's this rumor that this happened. And so there's, you know, Okumura's at the top of the fan site. There's some shady rumors about them. And you're also just having burgers and Japanese burgers in Hawaii, because why not? Um, so this this scene is the most sort of plot heavy, I think, of For this sure. week. Yeah. And it's it's still very light, but yeah, it's yeah. probably the most plot heavy. But yeah, it's, it's funny. It's mostly just seeding things that you kind of already know are going to come up later. Yeah. I do love the idea that the leader of uh, Okumura Foods would be at the top of the fan site, because I guess it would be like everyone knowing whoever the hell is the head of McDonald's. But it's like, right. I, I don't know who that, that man is. Um, but yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. That, that was basically the only thought I had about that, where I was just like, why totally. would all these kids know who Okumura is? But um, <laughs> uh, yeah. You kind of also just determine that you're realizing more that uh, the Phantom Thieves are known here, mm-hmm. right? And so you go back to the beach, and you get this one moment of control with Joker where you just go to walk around and talk to three different people and basically just say, hey, do you know the Phantom Thieves? And apparently all of them speak Japanese, so that's great. <laughs> um... And all of them are, or most of them, but not all of them, are, like, at least aware of the Phantom Thieves, right? And that's kind of basically it. You just are like, they're like, yeah, I know the Phantom Thieves are, no, I've never heard of them. And then and that's, you you move on. Yeah. Um, And sitting there is the same girl from the with the watering can, Haru, who you almost ran into the week before. And she is also a third year at Shujin and is also chaperoning the trip. Um, And then says thank you very much and leaves basically yeah. after Ryuji of course has the hots for her yet again yes yeah. yes uh, um yeah it, it, it's again it's kind of just like a little bit of just like seeding ideas seeding like oh you actually talked to this person that you've run into a couple times now yeah um but as you as you have in our notes it does lead to a strange scene uh later on yeah uh <laughs> Ka- Kawakami is just like posing in a bikini in her hotel room and like Haru just like walks in on her and she's like ah (laughs) like that's basically the whole scene how did Haru walk in what was Kawakami doing why why was any of this okay uh yeah it's a it's a weird scene it just is so confusing yeah um the the idea that any chaperone would have their door open in a hotel uh they would not be a chaperone anymore probably (laughs) um and Maybe you know. Maybe she's keeping it open for the students. Okay. Sure. While she does poses in her, I don't. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, she's got like I do. The, the posing thing is a little bit fan servicey, but also it sure. is very sort of like. I do like how in character it is for Kawakami to be like, looking in the mirror, looking at herself, and being like, "Oh man," like just kind of feeling bad about herself is like a thing that she does. It does. Right? Yes. Is like, yeah. That's that is a trend of her storyline is like her feeling like she's too old or whatever, and it's yeah. like oh Kawakami. It is just funny to me because I do think it it probably is a little bit influenced by how far you in, are in with her confidant line. Like if you sure. haven't hung out or interacted with Kawakami at all, it might feel a little out of place more so. Sure, but yeah, you're you're totally right in terms of fitting with her character. But yeah, I I really appreciate and love how much of a like a like how much anxiety Kawakami has as a character. I I think that is like genuinely makes her a more interesting character. than She could otherwise be also the idea that she's like 
really out, it she doesn't hide it well from her students like especially right. joker obviously but in general I, I i'm trying to think back and i'm sure i had teachers who were dealing with anxiety or depression at some point <laughs> but i sure. can't really remember any of them kind of just being as out there with it as as kawakami is to a like a good and bad degree, I guess. But yeah, yeah not to stigmatize it. But exactly. Also just like yeah, it's it, she's very upfront about it. Yeah, which is a, you know I appreciate especially that they're willing to explore the idea that like I, I think as a kid you have this idea that your teachers are sort of like over here, like they they are a separate. It's the joke of like you you don't see teachers outside of school, uh, and, right? And so to to have a teacher who's just kind of so outwardly dealing with emotional, you know, issues and, and problems in their own personal life that can bleed into their, their school life, I think is a probably a more realistic depi- depiction of how a teacher's life is. <laughs> sure. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Uh, you get then from this scene with Haru and Kawakami, it jumps back to uh, the mainland Japan, uh, where Futaba is working on getting the data stuff and has made some breakthrough but isn't done yet, and Morgana's like, let me know what's happening, and Futaba's like, I'm working, no. And Morgana very uh, outwardly this time says, all I can do is turn into a bus, I'm useless to everybody, and yeah. Morgana doesn't really hear him say this, and it's it's just Morgana feeling very useless and feeling very kind of without a, a place within the group now. Yeah. Which I think is, to your point, also what this Hawaii trip is partly good at doing is creating literal physical distance and between, you know, Joker and the group and Morgana and isolating, serving to isolate Morgana even more within, within this position in this time. Yeah. Because like you were saying, there's no one there to usually Joker would probably be the one to be like, Oh, stop that. Like you don't, that's not true. You mean more, but Futaba is so into her work and we're going to then has no one else to bounce off of. And so it just, it stews and it festers. And that's kind of how that stuff works. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, then this evening, Ryuji and on both show up at your hotel room for different reasons, but I love how connected these different reasons are Yeah, because Ryuji shows up and is like, my roommate kicked me out because his girlfriend came over and then on shows up and is like, my roommate left to go hang out with his her boyfriend and I didn't have my key and I locked myself out of my room. <laughs> and so they both are like without a home and they decide to just come and sleep at your place. Ryuji on the floor, right? Yeah. Um, and you get this nice sort of sleepover moment with the, the team just sort of like being real with each other and just talking stuff out and talking about like girls and it just feels very friendly high school like like friend group i don't know yeah. i really love the vibe of this scene no yeah it, it's totally the like high school sleepover sort of level because you're not kids anymore and so like a sleepover usually is not <laughs> it, it's not that like as kiddie of an idea it's like yeah we're gonna stay up all night and it's kind of just yeah we're hanging out just talking about somewhat real life stuff but we're also teenagers so some things have a you know increased focus and obviously on is giving reuji these hypotheticals about like how uh just basically how superficial is reuji when it comes to girls it, it, it is sort of where that conversation goes but um yeah i i really love this scene too in terms of just like Again, re-solidifying their friends, and, and yeah. they, they care about each other. It, yeah. Yeah. And then, we go back to the mainland again to see a scene from the SIU director uh, on the phone, basically talking about giving someone who has failed them in their investigation a heart attack and eliminating them, uh, which is heavily implied at this point to be the principal because of all the previous scenes that we've seen, but also just later in the week we know it's it's the principal we don't have to Um, worry about spoiling it yeah (laughs) yeah this is the culmination of a lot of these conversations of like the siu director being like let's take out the trash and then the principal being on a phone call being like oh no please don't take out the trash of me and then now the siu director is being like we're going to take out the trash and then the trash is indeed taken out a couple days later um but yeah this is a brief scene and it's I mean, we can talk about this once we get to the actual cutscene later on. No, totally. I just really like the idea that they call him trash to his face. (laughs) (laughs) Which is not the exact conversation, but pretty much is. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, 
September 10th. Yes. This is another quick day. You guys meet up in the hotel again, and Ryuji's like, let's go pick up chicks. Basically, Ryuji's really annoyed that all they've done is things that they could just do in Japan anyway, and wants to go end his Hawaii vacation with a, with a Hawaii fling, right? So he goes off to pick up chicks and drags Mishima with him because you get a text. Uh, maybe? I guess you could technically not get this text. Um, I don't know. I'm No, I think you get... Well, because you get several. Well, you can get several. Oh, okay. So did, Okay, so here, let, let's get into it. Okay. You go back to your hotel room and you check your text messages. Yeah. At this point, you're given the one and only choice of the Hawaii trip, yeah. which is... Depending on your confidant relationships with certain characters, uh-huh. you can choose who to go out with that evening. Um, and it's there are five possible choices. It's On, Makoto, Hifumi, uh, Ryuji. If you if you don't have any relationships with any of the girls, then you just can go with Ryuji. Um, or if you are already dating Kawakami. Kawakami is an answer here. And you really? Can go spend, yeah, you can spend the oh, evening wow. with Kawakami. I did not know um, that. <laughs> yeah. So that is, I think, I believe that's only if you were actively dating Kawakami. Gotcha. But that is a problematic scene we won't get into because that is genuinely, like, the conversations they have there just, like, does nothing but throw gas on a fire. Like, it does not <sighs> yeah. need to exist. It is really, really problematic. But I think largely most people are not dating Kawakami by this point and don't even see that scene or know it's an option. Gotcha. Uh, so who did you have available to you and what did you do? Uh, Hifumi, Makoto, and On were my okay. choices. Yeah. Um, and so I ended up hanging out with... I did struggle for a minute because my uh, my confidant ranking with On is pretty low right now. I actually haven't hung out with her much. Um, okay. But... Uh, and I did think about Hifumi because I definitely didn't have that choice last time because I didn't talk to Hifumi, but I ended up hanging out with uh, Makoto. Makoto is his best girl. It yeah. makes sense. Uh, and um, we hung out at the beach. Yeah. So I only had Hifumi available. Okay. Between them. Uh, and the, I think you have to get to like six or seven with them or okay. something like that. You just have to be far enough along in your confidant track with that person. So, like, I haven't spent much time with On or Makoto yet, so I just had Hifumi, and uh, I went with Hifumi. The The thing here is... the This is basically, like, a way to get a free confidant time date in with somebody who you, you want to spend time with. Um, the scenes for the girls that you can bring out are basically identical they are identical in structure not dialogue i guess is the way to put it you you get almost identical scenes between them uh and then the other one which is i don't know if you've ever done that one with ryuji i don't think i have no it's just like goofy spending time with the boys trying to pick up chicks and and completely striking out yes yeah because you go with ryuji and mishima and then you run into yusuke the, the the thing one of the constants in these dates is that the you go get garlic shrimp yes yeah and then in the when you go with the boys uh you look over and you're like hey that food smells good and Yusuke is just like there with a giant plate of garlic shrimp <laughs> <laughs> he has no money he shouldn't well, be doing that <laughs> he says it's delectable or whatever <sighs> so. yeah that's um I didn't know that that's really funny but what do, you, what do you make of this? Because I think it's kind of, it's a nice little, like, with the it's a funny scene if you go with the boys. I don't think it's, like, bad, right? It's just them being creepers again. Um, but in this in- instance, getting, like, shot down by some older women, I believe is how it goes. Um, and then the dates are just, like, kind of cute little romantic conversations with whatever character you're interested in. They are, at least, obviously, I, I don't remember which scene I had last time, but... Um with the Makoto scene, like, I don't know how to read it in any other way, but it being a date, like yeah, definitely it's the, super a date. the, the confidant, you know, moments can definitely be more friend oriented, but this is a hundred percent. This is the closest to a date I've had with someone other than a catchy in this game <laughs> is basically, it's yeah. the most romantic other than going to the jazz club. So, you know, I read it as very much like whoever I'm going to hang out with in Hawaii on this beautiful beach as the sun sets, awkwardly sitting next to each other in our bathing suits on a bench 
definitely a date <laughs> is yeah. kind of how it reads. Um, and they all they all end with them being like, we should probably go back. And you're like, just a little bit longer. We'll and just like, watch the sunset. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the creepiest like response. Um, hey, they're happy. No, I know. But I, I read it in that <laughs> voice, too. I read it in the, yeah. no, let's just wait here a little longer. Like, all, right, all right, you weirdo. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it 100% feels like a date. Uh, it, even yeah. like down to the dialogue, making it feel like Makoto, at least, you know, obviously in, in that scene, I don't know the, the choices with Hifumi, but Makoto seems can be like really impressed by you and is like really kind of warms up to you in a way that kind of chips away at the like professional exterior that she sometimes has as being the, like the adult in the room. Um, yeah. It very much felt like, because there, there's at one point, I don't know if it's a Hifumi question, but she asks, like, are you adventurous with your food? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, most of the time. She's like, that's amazing. And it's like, <laughs> I just said I try different foods sometimes. Um, but yeah, it definitely definitely felt like a date. Dakota is easily impressed. Um, yeah, no, so, and th- this all culminates in you get an item from each of them, and I believe you get a different charm from each person. Oh, cool. Uh, so, like, I, with Hofumi, I got, like, the, I think it was the Honu charm, which was, like, a turtle charm. Um, and I believe they, I think they might all do the same thing, but, uh, like, okay. be a different item name. Or it might be, di- I'm, I'm not sure on the specifics of that, but you get a different charm for each of them. Um, and, yeah, you just get this little extra date moment there. Um, then that evening, Mishima is whining about something in your hotel room, probably the fan site. I literally just put Mishima whines in my notes, and then I didn't remember what it was about. <clears throat> oh, I was muted because uh, I was <laughs> typing and I didn't want to bother you. Uh, I don't think I wrote anything down about Mishima here. Okay. Then, yeah, yeah Mishima so, whines about something. Uh, and then the the final kind of big thing that happens is, or actually, there's a little more the next day, but the final big thing that happens this day is, again, back in Japan at LeBlanc, uh, Maruki comes and visits LeBlanc, and while Morgana and Futaba are just kind of hanging out in the cafe, and uh, Maruki is reading a book about cognitive science and basically talking about how he wants to study it to help his patients, and... This is very alarming to Sojiro at first, but then Futaba sort of gets up the courage to talk to him and ends up talking with him pretty openly. And this is like, you remember how I was saying, like every party member gets their little counseling session with Maruki. This is basically the way they figured out to give Futaba a counseling session with Maruki is like pretty much what it is. Yeah, I was, I was really surprised to see this scene because obviously, you know, it's royal uh, additive and... I, I really liked it. I, I thought, like, I really didn't know what to expect, especially because you get um, Sojuro, you know, kind of as soon as soon as cognitive science comes up, uh, trying to get him out at that point. Like, he gets, yeah. he, he suddenly just turns, like, no, you need to leave. And Vita was like, no, he's just a nice dude. Just let him be here. And, like, it's okay. Because Sojuro obviously really, really wants to protect her. And she's like, I can talk about those things. Um, yeah, I, I really liked the scene and yes, even though it is very much like shoehorning in a, a therapy session for Futaba, I did, I, I enjoyed the discussions and sort of the bond that they had here. Yeah. And it's notable even as you find out the next day that, uh, Futaba opened up to him so much so quickly is like very notable. Yeah. And he seems trustworthy, right? In that regard of just like, oh yeah, she can just talk to him and that's nice. Does he comment on her talking to her cat? Is that... Yes, 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 yeah. He also does notice that Futaba talks to Morgana and uh, it, he's like, oh, you talk to your cat? That's cool. Cool, <laughs> like, yeah, he's just like, whatever. He's like it. one of the few people that acknowledges that that happens. Yeah, I, uh, this is not trying to be a spoiler in any way. I'm not saying like, oh, Maruki knows all these things. I don't know <laughs> anything about like Maruki's story from here. Sure. So I am, I am hanging on like everything that he says because I do know that this game can seed things like that. And so I'm like... <laughs> Does yeah. he, does he hear, does he hear him? What's going on here? <laughs> like I'm, 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 I'm in the like Charlie Day, Pepe, Pepe Sylvia sort of mode. <laughs> get the, the red, the red string all yeah, over exactly. the place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I feel that. Um, we'll see. That's, that's the end of that day. Uh, and the next day is the day you're all going back and you realize, oh no, we need to buy souvenirs for people. Um, so you go souvenir shopping and basically like, 
Like you go to this this Hawaiian souvenir shop that like I literally know I've been into, right? It looks like <laughs> every generic Hawaiian souvenir shop ever. Uh, and they're all looking for things and can't really find anything that's cool. And then Kasumi adorably ambushes you where she's like, hello, senpai, <laughs> yeah. like jumps at you, which is such a more like flavorful, cute way of doing that than like she could just walk on camera and be like, oh, senpai, you're here. And like, yeah. just do that. And like, I love that they gave her this little moment of, of character. Yeah, it's um, it, it's a really cute um, entry moment. And it's a big deal because it's uh, like, I think just a week or, or two ago we were talking about and, and it's in the dialogue of how no one else really has you know, interacted with Kasumi much because of, uh, right. I think they were talking about it on the, the, the news of, of yeah. her not doing too well. And, and everyone else was circumspect and, and doesn't really know her. So they, they only have so much to go on, but here it's, everyone <laughs> can kind of be there as, as, yeah, exactly. as they interact. She explains that she's there for like a training camp, right. Uh, to, to train for the next meet. And yeah, everyone, everyone who's there, right. Makoto and Yusuke and Ryuji and on all get to meet Kasumi and, talk to her a little bit and um she like kind of says some worrying things where she's like oh yeah we're training with this incredibly like strict trainer who uh is we work so hard every day that we cry <laughs> and it's like oh man yep that's harsh and then at some point i forget who says kind words to her but someone does and she goes really? your kind words may be what keeps me from crying today and it's just like <laughs> oh my god I can't, or I guess I guess somebody says kind mm. words and then she says your kind words may be keeping you from crying and then Ryuji's like oh but it's okay if you you know if you need to cry it's fine yeah and it's like it's, Yuji you're so good it's yeah it's a very cute moment um that I that I really like a lot and yeah as you said it, it kind of just again is one of those funny you know oh so what else is in Hawaii and we get to have <laughs> these moments yeah. together um before we got suddenly there, Morgana is there I know uh before we get there I do just want to point out there was a very funny um earlier in the the shopping experience we get like a few minutes of what's funny to me about this this whole scene is just all of them just kind of are spending a day in there like it's a very funny uh recreation of of being in a souvenir shop because you can just lose so much time doing nothing yeah and and looking at everything but not buying any of it and it's just a very funny uh encapsulation of that that i really yeah and they are it is like out of a good place where they're trying to find like they're both like Futaba and Morgana are really like great and they like good things and we need to find them a good gift we can't get them something bad and like yeah they probably should have thought of that before literally moments before their flight but at the same time like they're trying right like they want to get them something nice and then Yusuke is like I have a three minute hourglass timer that Futaba can use (laughs) <laughs> it's so thoughtful. Well, it's very specific. Yeah, it, it, the intention he's, is very much there. He's like, I'm going to get her this three-minute hourglass timer so that she can use it to time her instant ramen that she loves so much. And it's like, that's actually, like, I mean, you don't need to get that in Hawaii for her, but that's yeah. actually very thoughtful. No, yeah. Like, it's That's nice. It's very kind. It was just very funny in terms of, like, that was where the gift went for yeah. him in, in that yeah. case. Yeah. Uh, and finally, unless you had anything else to say about the Kasumi thing, basically you just talked to her about how she's training for her meet and she really needs her performances for the next, or her results for the next meet. Yeah. Um, and that's it. The only thing there was just her talking about, um, the reason she feels like she didn't do well in the last one because of her superstition with, uh, getting a charm, uh, right. b- before oh, yeah, each gets one. The, gets her charm. The good luck charm. Meet. And, and she was, t- she talked a little bit more about her sister and how she was even more superstitious, but how she forgot to get a charm before the last one. So she's hoping things will go better this time. Cause she has yeah. one. Yeah. You know what? I'm hosting today. I'm taking this off the rails. We're do- talking about Kasumi's confidant <gasps> line right now. Oh no. Because it's a good segue and there's not <laughs> much left in the days. And now if we do it now, I won't forget and we won't delay in the next 10 minutes. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, we're kind of running short on time. So I didn't want to force you to, but <laughs> actually, okay, we're going to wait. <laughs> we're going to wait until after, but we're actually 100% going to do it. And I'm going to hurry to get there, but we're going to wait till after in case anybody hasn't finished Kasumi and wants to finish. We can, we can talk about it after. We'll, That's we'll, fair. we'll hold it to the end of the show. Yeah. We are doing it today because I've been sparked by this. So blur, moving on. Yeah. Just blur through these, the, the death and the other that important evening, things. Principal fine, dies over, next. Yeah. We're moving to September. No. So yeah. Um, that evening you do get the big cut scene that is one of the most sort of like 
stand out in my mind cutscenes because of how like horrific it is. I remember it so clearly from the first yeah. time playing through. Yeah. So you get the principal crossing the st- the principal's in like really hot weather and kind of the evening. He's crossing the street uh, to go somewhere, which we find out the next day is the police station. And then in the middle of the road, he kind of gets this horrible look on his face and he clutches his chest. And then his eyes, just in like the most unnecessary close up, like roll back in his head. And then as a truck is coming around the corner, is going to hit him and can't stop. He looks at the truck and his eyes are white and like bleeding black ooze. And it's just really, really grotesque. It's um, so dark. And, and the implication, at least for me, of like, uh, a heart being stolen to that extent like the yeah we we know what happens when people are have a change of heart but we haven't killed any of those people within the cognitive world so yeah and the the only glimpse we've gotten of this before is the train driver at the very beginning of the game and even then you don't see like you don't see it happen to them like that yeah this and is a horror movie yeah yeah it's really gruesome it's really gruesome but it's also to that end, effective in what it's trying to do, which is show kind of how awful of an act this is Mm -hmm. and, like, what the SIU director was, like, planning to do, now we can put the pieces together, planning to do to him. It's, like, really remorseless and really brutal. Um, And, yeah, and that that scene happens, and then the evening ends. Um, So the next day, you fly back, you get a cute little flying loading screen yeah uh notably the poll is now at 80 percent positive for the phantom thieves so your your popularity has increased by like 20 percent over just this week right um and you get back and not only that phantom thieves there's a news report about how phantom thieves swag items products is super popular right now and people are selling phantom thieves merch like crazy yeah and sojiro even jokes about like maybe i should start making phantom thieves merch right and and I, I very directly told him, you should. And he's like, I was just joking. You don't have to take yeah. it so serious. I was like, okay, sorry. But if you tell him if you tell him to make Phantom Curry or whatever, he'll be like, maybe I can put some dry ice on the side so yeah. it's all phantom-y. And it's, like, really cute. Yeah. Um, but he is kidding. And then on the news also is Akechi, who's basically less harsh on the Phantom Thieves, right? He, he He's saying, you know, it's clear that there's some sort of chivalry to their actions but also it's clear that it's, like, smart of them to be going after what the public wants as, like, their, to get them on their side. And then he sort of has to stop himself because he's like, I'm not going to say anything else because he doesn't want to get in tr- more trouble because the public is already sort of turning on him. Yeah. Um. So he admits that the Phantom Thieves, he relents a little bit, but he doesn't, like, he doesn't outright say, yeah, they're good now. He's still, like, they're dangerous, but, like, it's clear that they're not doing things terrible right now, but they are still bad. So he's, yeah. like, sticking to his gun somewhat, but also trying to probably ease up the pressure that is on him somewhat, too. Totally. Yeah. It's, um... um yeah, as you said, he's he's holding back, because he, he's, yeah. he's smart enough to know to not dig a hole for himself. Yeah. Right. Uh, Futaba says that she's finished decoding size data... But you're so jet lagged, you're about to fall asleep, so you're gonna do this the next day. And then you get a text conversation where Futaba brings up the Maruki thing and how like comfortable he was to talk to, and Yusuke is basically like, Wow, if this guy is like good enough that Futaba just like wanted to open up to him, like I wanna talk to him too. And so, again, in the sitcom style of just like lining stuff up, Yusuke's like, I would like, like, can we, Makoto, can you organize it so that I can meet with Maruki also and talk to him? Because Yusuke is now the only member of the party who hasn't directly had, like, a quote-unquote counseling session with him. Uh, so that's now getting set up and gonna happen. I'm, I'm piecing together theories for Maruki, but we'll see where it goes. <laughs> oh, um, okay. We'll see. We'll see. Um, okay. the, the only other thing I did want to mention, this was just going back to the Morgana stuff, was before that text conversation comes oh, up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Morgana is like, hey, can we talk? And then the text chain happens, and you can just go to bed, but if you go back to Morgana to try to talk with him, he's like, eh, it's not the right time anymore. We can talk later. And it, again, it is just that, like, the weak separation really... Um, through him because normally in the evenings he will just kind of like come and talk to you on the bed that is just the thing he is pretty openly doing but here he just is like no i'm good 
we can talk about it later. Like his, yeah, it, it, it's deteriorating for him, and you can feel that building really yeah. well here. Yeah, they really make Morgana very, very sad, and you do just have to go to bed. Um, and the final thing of this day and this week is that Sai and Makoto, you have a conversation with Sai and Makoto in their house where Sai tells Makoto really bluntly that the principal has died and that they, that he took a taxi to the police station and then died in, and then is presumably committed suicide by jumping in front of a truck in the road, like on his way to the police station and basically is saying she thinks it sounds like maybe the Phantom Thieves did it because it was, like, a change of heart of why would he go to the police station. And Makoto says that's not their M.O., kind of trying to coyly defend them. But also, it's just the idea that, like, it's being ruled as a suicide, but, like, Sai clearly has her doubts and is like, why would he be taking a taxi to the police station to then kill himself? Yeah. So she knows that it's not exactly how it seems. Exactly, yeah. And it's, um... You know, I, Makoto should have just accidentally let it slip. Like, no, but they weren't even there. They were in another country just to, right. you know. But yeah, it's, uh, th- her suspicions, uh, obviously we know Sai directly interacts with the Phantom Thieves at some point. So this feels like another just kind of leading her toward that, that inevitable yeah. outcome. All right. We're doing Kasumi as fast as possible. Uh, if anybody would like to, uh, run away, now's the time. We're going to talk about Kasumi's confidant ranks one through five because i just want to mm-hmm. is it too late should... it's up to you i you're the one who has family visiting i'm gonna go play other video games after this i've got a Fortnite event this afternoon that's about it so you know it's up to you you have mentioned it several times in the show now god i really want to i'm just like <laughs> i can't tell if it'd be funnier to not do it now Hmm. I don't know. I don't. Uh, I, you know our what? Apologies audience... to Kasumi. We just oh, don't have time no. to... <laughs> This was not planned. I genuinely wanted to get to her today. Real talk. Hear me out. Okay. Should we do like one or two ranks? Oh, and that's then not continue a bad idea. it next week. Yeah. Okay. 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 We'll do the first couple ranks. Yeah. So Kasumi is an interesting confidant line mm-hmm. because. Um, her deal, like, her story is very clearly tied to the main story, and, like, you learn more about, kind of, her overall arc through the main story, right? So, like, her confidant things are more about her trying to get her confidence back and trying to get, like, how you helping her get her confidence back, but, like, the actual results of that are more just sort of tied into what is happening with her, like, in her meet and going to the Hawaii training camp and that sort of thing. Um... So going back to the very beginning, her confidant line actually sort of kicks off. You run into her a couple times, but it really kicks off with you saving her from this creep at a train station, right, at Shibuya before the, like, cleanup day that's way, way back. Mm -hmm. Um, And then during that cleanup day, you get ditched by your group, and she says, oh, hey, let's just eat, you know, let's eat food together and chat. And so you chat, she's super nice and friendly, um, and then she does that hilarious sort of like tumble catch to catch the balloon that the kid had using her gymnastics. The most dramatic video game esque save. It's like, yeah, Kazumi used gymnastics. It was yeah. super effective to catch a balloon. But yeah, yeah basically. Um, uh, and her, her wallet falls out or whatever. Right. And you see her name and she's like, Oh, I couldn't introduce myself. You already caught my name. I'm Kasumi Yoshizawa, blah, 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 blah. Um, then, you strike a deal basically to say, teach me how to be limber and gymnastical like that. And I'll hang out with you and give you advice and help you. Did you say of. gymnastical? I did. Okay. Just checking. Yeah. Anyway, I knew it. And that was intentional. All right, cool. Um, and that's rank one. Rank two is you go to the park and to stretch, not even to train yet. Just to like, she's just teaching you how to stretch. Uh, and she basically expa- explains to you that she's, stuck in a slump ever since she started high school um and she can't get better no matter how much she chains and her coach tells her that she should take some time off think about who she really is and that she's just been depressed lately and doesn't know how to get herself out of it uh but she wants to learn from your confidence right because your joker is a very confident guy so she wants to just spend time with you to learn and that's sort of a reiteration of stuff we already sort of knew about her um 
And at some point, like, the thing with her sister, right, we learn outside of this confidant line. And I think it's pretty clear that it's tied to why she's in a slump. And, yeah. Right. But, like, it's not as much addressed in the confidant line because, you know, at the point in the story, you don't know when you're going to kind of have that moment. No, totally. As you said, I, I feel like a lot of her stuff is it's hard for me to separate the story moments from the confidant moments with her. Um, right. Because they are so ingrained into, into her character arc and, and what we've seen so far. Um, and yeah. I, I appreciate all of that because I do think then the you get a lot of really great stuff about who she is within the story, but then you get to let these... At the end of the day, confidant moments are about building the bond between you and someone else. And I do think these scenes do a good job of like establishing that uh even if it keeps coming around to the idea of like you're confident teach me that but it's yeah you you get so much more of who she is when looking at the wider story and how these relate to it yeah uh and that's kind of the trend of her thing right like we can honestly we can blow through the next couple ranks because they're pretty quick and they're pretty repetitive in terms of what's going on because um you know, there's the story, you meet up with her at that construction site, and then you talk with her about how she did terrible at her last meet at some point. This isn't a confidant rank, this is just part of the story again. And, like, that's when she tells you about her sister, I believe. But then there's also, like, this moment with the rank three thing where you go have lunch with her in the cafeteria, and she just, like, like, it doesn't really add much that we didn't already know, right? It's basically just her being, like, screwing up and getting really frazzled about it, and then realizing that she, like, Joker is kind of teaching her not to like dwell on her failures as much but like just sort of like keep going is the sort of overall message uh and that's honestly the same exact thing with her rank four and her rank five thing which is like rank four is when they go glasses shopping and she's totally getting into her own head about it and you kind of just teach her to be like just stop overthinking it stop questioning yourself and just like go with what feels right right um, and then rank five is the same thing in the batting cages where she's like, I want to prove that I can do this. I want to hit a batting bat or a ball. And, uh, sh- she is missing like crazy and getting in her own head. And you're just like, just keep at it. And she manages to hit one. And then that's like a moment for her where she's like, right. Like I, sh- I need to just stop getting into my own head about this. And I need to get out of that and just do what I can. And yeah. like, I feel like that's what the bulk of her her confident line is. It's just reiterating, like, don't let yourself get... Don't keep beating yourself up. Don't get, let yourself get caught up in this and, like, just be confident in yourself and, like, be confident with what you're, the choices you're making over and over and over and over again. But, but to the extent that it's not, like, life-changing, because it, it can't right. be because the sort of story so far has necessitated her failing at a couple of yes. these points like you're having those problems so it's like i i think it does a good job of you're right it keeps kind of reiterating the same point and it's a it's a very important point and i think a point that probably all of us are could stand to hear throughout our lives but it is yeah. and um, one that's nice and important to her yeah and it, but it also doesn't materially like change your ability like it is something yeah. that like at the end of the day um y- it, even putting in all the work, like sometimes still, and and having the confidence to do well, sometimes things just still don't work out, um, and, and that seems to be at least like the the back and forth here of of the confidant line versus the main story because it's like yeah by by the time that she has that really terrible meet, I've gone to rank five, and it's like oh all my confidence work didn't help, but it, it's like obviously there are larger forces at. at work in her life and, and larger problems and things. And so I do think it, it balances that sense of like, you're not just going to suddenly solve life and, and be perfect at everything, but like you yeah. need to keep working at these things. You need to keep chipping away at that. Like it, it is an important, consistent thing to remind yourself of. Yeah. And I like Kasumi's story kind of arc, or not really arc, but like, I like those points because of that. I like her as a character and we're not done with her by any means. Right. We know again that she shows up in a palace later right like there's a lot more to her story and that's also something that's kind of this is only a five rank confidant but there's very clearly like i i know what's coming so i'm going to try to speak around spoilers here but jonathan you and i discussed this already a little bit and you don't know what's coming yeah there's some already some weird things happening right like no other confidant is five ranks uh 
the her name when you go hang out with her on the board after she's already been maxed is only white, where the other ones that you max are yellow. Um, the text, the I am thou, thou art I sort of thing when you max her out is slightly di worded differently than the others when you max them out. So there's clearly some stuff going on here where this is, I like this as like the times you're hanging out with her. I think it tells an interesting little story, but it's very clearly an incomplete picture of who she is as a person, her character arc within the larger story, uh, and sort of all of that is still a little bit different. And so there's some mystery there still to, to kind of uncover. Yeah, because I, I am just... I know in relation to where we are in the story when the scene from the beginning takes place. Right. Um, and so I am very curious to see how things go from here to there. Yeah. Um, because I don't know. And, and that's really exciting. So again, please in the comments don't spoil that. But if you're also going along that journey for the first time, welcome. Uh, I really want to know <laughs> like how all of this ends up tying together. And obviously I also know some other things about it that I don't want to spoil, but was just about sure. to. So I'll stop myself there. And suffice to say, I've really enjoyed getting to know Kasumi as an addition to the game. Um, yeah, and good. think they've yeah. done a very good job of establishing who she is and, and making her feel distinct from everyone else. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to kind of uncover more of her stuff through the main story as well. So we can talk about more of that once we get to it, but I'm glad that we did it. We spent five <laughs> minutes. We just knocked this out. We don't ever have to think about it again. Great. There good. you go. Let's move on. What's the persona pseudonym? <laughs> Closing this out. <laughs> Tom. Yeah. Who is? Okay. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. So you're going to give, okay. Go I ahead. mean, no, we can guess the, the, how this works by now. Who yeah. is the captivating dancer? Oh God. Um, I don't think we've seen that one yet. No, it's not that one then. Is she blue? Uh, no. Unless we have different perceptions of the color blue, like I was referring to earlier. <laughs> uh, no, I don't no, believe No, no, so. no, no. Then it's not that one I was thinking of. Who were you oh, thinking man. of? I was thinking of Isis. Gotcha. Um... I think that's its name isis captivating dancer i'm looking up isis just out of curiosity obviously within a persona uh wiki man i'm, I'm stuck just... on this one too you're getting me now we need uh, to get back to a palace i was I'm gonna like say up. yeah it's been a while since we've had to encounter personas so i i can understand if it's uh i got nothing taken a second but uh-oh. Let me, why won't this, this page open? Um, hmm. Anything? Oh, you froze for me for a oh, long time. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> well, that'll be fun uh, for no. people to listen to. I've got nothing. The answer is the first persona you need for the twins, Ame no Izumi. Oh, Ame no Izumi, okay, okay. Or okay. that, or what you said is probably the correct <laughs> way to say it. Uh... All right. Interesting. Yeah. So I don't think I know. Interesting. I don't know where you see Amenosume. Apparently in Matarame's palace. It. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I don't remember okay. encountering, that was a good pull. encountering them either, but I saw it on that list and was like, really? So yeah. Yeah. That's a good pull. That's a deep cut. Um, anyway, let's go with my pop quiz where I'm going to answer this and you can let me know in the comments or at Tom R. Marks on Twitter or at JM Dornbush on Twitter or at Dernology at gmail.com. Uh, or in the comments on the YouTube channel at Dronology. Who oh boy, we're running through this. So, the question is, as long as you don't hang out with the boys in Hawaii, because I needed to pick a Hawaii question, sure. you go get some garlic shrimp. The garlic shrimp vendor, uh, this might be an easy one for anybody who did this, but it's going to be a hard one for anyone who didn't. The garlic <laughs> shrimp vendor has heard of the Phantom Thieves, and he loves the Phantom Thieves. I think the Phantom Thieves are real cool. Uh, what... Does the garlic shrimp vendor request, ask you to request of the Phantom Thieves? That's your question for next week. Thank you very much for joining us and take your time. Uh, uh? Also, tell us what Sojiro owes us or that we owe Sojiro. <laughs> yeah, that one, That's a that bonus pop too. quiz for you. That one too. Yeah. Um, uh, it's been a pleasure as always. Leave comments wherever you can. 
Who boy, this one, you know, it's always a short one. Yep, uh, always a short one. Take your time. <laughs> we like to take our time. It's in the name. We do. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, you have any parting words? Um, when we get to some really big story weeks, we might want to record earlier in the day so we can go longer. Uh, yeah. So that we don't have to worry about it being a short one. But yeah. It'll be good. Other than yeah, that, we'll thanks for listening. All right. Thanks, everybody. And so long. 